Hello again. In this video we will be looking at how to remove an old chimney stack below roof level and some of the things you may want to consider when you do so. The very first place to start is of course safety and while I can't give sensible advice on every possible scenario I can point out some expected and unexpected hazards of working with old chimney stacks and I've made that video available separately and a link to it will be available in the YouTube description bar and via the links at the end of the video. Please take time to just give it a look. This is the chimney we will be removing in this video. It's a simple single skin brickwork one flue chimney stack and I've fitted a lightweight scaffold system to just above gutter height and temporarily removed the safety rails so that you can see the photos I've taken a bit better. This property is a bungalow and the whole side of the property is completely blocked off from all possible pedestrians that may wander underneath. The next thing to notice is that I can stand up behind the chimney stack and reach the top of the chimney to work without having to lean on or place a ladder against the stack itself. What this means is that I can pass rubble or bricks from the chimney to a second operative standing on the scaffolding in complete safety. Ok let's just have a little look down the chimney stack itself by poking the camera down the flue. Now this flue is actually disused and has been bricked up inside, plastered and decorated as well. So what I don't want to happen here is to drop bricks, rubble or lots of dust down this flue and the reason for that is there's no way to clean it out afterwards. And if I were to drop debris down here I risk a small pile of old mortar potentially bridging any damp proofing or creating damp spots at the base of his chimney breast and inside the property. Obviously we don't want that and I'm going to avoid this by gently packing an old dust rag inside the flue just below working height like this. Now this particular chimney is on a bungalow so I can't easily lose the rag beyond the throat of the chimney if it was to slip but on a two or more storey house I would always attach a string to the rag in case of slippage. This way I can always pull the string and remove the rag. This particular chimney pot is cast into place with concrete so chipping away the flaunching and sliding out the pot isn't an option as it would be with old mortar flaunching for example. So what I'm going to do is smash the pot up with a basic claw hammer. I find the easiest way to do this is tap the top of the pot gently but firmly in an outside direction. If you have an old stack like this however with mortar flaunching between the pots you can either break up the pots or remove the old flaunching gently with a hammer and bolster. Back on our job I'm going to chip off the rest of the pot and turn my attention to splitting the concrete cast that holds it. One of the safest ways I've found of doing this is to carefully drive a bolster underneath one corner of the cast like this. This Photoshop mock-up exaggerates slightly what's happening but it's easier to see. The bolster levers up one end of the cast and creates a slight gap underneath the concrete. Now a good strong thump with a hammer or lump hammer in the middle should split the concrete into two halves. As you can see here a good firm tap with the hammer has cracked it where we'd hoped. Now I can drive the bolster into this crack and create fracture lines elsewhere. You can repeat this process as necessary to remove any flaunching in safe, lightweight, manageable chunks. If we take a look you can see that the rag placed in the flue catches anything we miss and the loose bits can now be plucked from the top and disposed of. Now it's just a matter of nice steady brick removal. Each chimney is different. Here I'm using the bolster to separate the courses but sometimes you can simply tap the bricks loose with a hammer. Just work your way down the stack one brick at a time like this. And every few courses clean the rag and reposition it a little bit further down the flue. After a while you will have reduced the chimney to flashing height and it's now time to slow down a bit and be a little bit more cautious. What we want to do now is strip the chimney beyond the flashings and beneath the pitch of the roof but not beyond the ceiling inside the room as this would mean internal wall and ceiling damage to the room located beneath. This is a good example. I very carefully stripped down to the final reduction height and here's what you can see. 
This is the plasterboard ceiling in the room below. The external face of the chimney is now reduced to wall or wall plate height and any other bricks have been bolstered off so they don't sit higher than the pitch of the roof. In short we can now stop removing bricks and cover the roof back over. One final check of the flue reveals it's still clear and no debris has fallen down to cause problems later on. Next I'm going to strip off all the redundant flashings like these, then the surrounding roof tiles and the no longer needed timber work for the chimney's back gutter. Now's the time to strip back any membrane or roofing felt ready for repair and fit any timbers that may be needed for roof tile support later on. Once that's done you can repair the undersarking by underlapping at the top and overlapping at the sides. With the underlap at the top normally being at around 100mm and the side overlaps also being around 100mm. Now that's done it's just a matter of tiling back up with matching roof tiles like this. And there you go. Just remember that any exposed flues inside the loft space will need to be made safe. Don't simply roll out the insulation over dangerous leg breaking drops and forget about them. Well that's this video done. Please check out the related chimney safety video linked here or in the description bar. Okay, thanks for watching.